Nice to meet you. You too. I've been talking with Tim for like six months, and I, it's nice to meet someone first time on a stage. Uh, nice. Well, welcome to the panel, everyone. We've got purple, purple fucking leads over there. That's me. We've got Ad Baker and Agency Y. So these guys are, you know, big time Facebook media buyers. They're building agencies, they're building networks, uh, and they're experts when it comes to uh, Facebook creative. So that's what we're going to talk about here. So let's start. Are static images dead, guys? I don't personally think so. I think they have a place in the market, but uh, there's definitely less inventory available on Facebook for static images now. They prioritize video. Uh, so if I had to guess, it's maybe like 70% video, 30% static images. It's always good to try, but these days you have to do video, in my yeah. opinion. Like generally speaking, when I look at the campaigns that we're setting up, like the majority of the campaigns that we're really able to scale are based on video. Um, and especially Facebook is also looking at the quality of the images and the videos you're using. So the higher quality the video is, the better it tends to convert, the better impressions you're getting, the more impressions you're getting. I think images are not that. Um, they still do work, especially for retargeting, if you combine them with like an incentive, a discount, a reminder, uh, or if you use like non single image based ad formats like carousel ads or collection ads or champion canvas been, or yeah exactly it works really well but i think that the like the future in my opinion is really going to be video marketing yeah. and video ads yeah i think video ads also add a a new element for targeting in the sense that it's a chance to gauge the intent and quantify this so we're able to build audiences lookalikes and and remarketing based on how long someone watched a video. So if someone watches a video 50% versus 95%, we know that there's a higher level of intent. Where an image, we only see if they click or they don't click. We don't get this nice in the middle area of targeting. And I think this uh, adds a lot of value. I know we use video views uh, for a lot of remarketing and audience building. So I think that uh, this is another reason it's really an advantage. That tactic's carpet bombing, right? Is that, is that a phrase that you coined? <laughs> I didn't coin you it. You didn't coin yeah, it, okay. Chris Colvert from the, uh, my group did, but, uh, uh, but it makes sense. You just hit a wide area and see what sticks. And you, get, and you do see what sticks, which is the best Absolutely. part, right? Because as people thumb through the, it's all about what people stop on yes. in that news feed flow, right? Yes. And if you stop for, yeah, 10 seconds longer, you're obviously more interested. So for iStack training, for the ads that we run for our courses, our all-time greatest ad was Lorenzo, uh, Lorenzo Green from Stack That Money. I don't know if he's in here, but he was, he's water skiing. Has anyone seen this ad? He's water skiing. Yeah, a couple people seen yeah. that ad. And then he falls into the water and he's carrying a MacBook Pro. It's a, it's a, it's a great image. Uh, but I'm curious, when it comes to actual uh, video, do, like, do you, is it better to use custom-made stock footage, better to use low-quality, high-quality? What, what are your thoughts on the actual quality of the video? Uh, I found that both work. There's some customers that really prefer the kind of more amateur feel, like a lot of times for e-commerce, for example, uh, if it's like a low price point, then just kind of like unboxing it and showing it around or whatever it is can work actually better than a really salesy video. But yeah. then if it's a high price point or something, you might need to get a little more salesy. But I mean, ultimately, you really just have to test because it really, it completely depends on so many things. And you can test a lot more when you're shooting it on your phone, right? You just can oh, get obviously. it up and yeah, get it's it much cheaper, yeah. I mean, I, we've, we've done a lot of stuff with like video blocks for stock footage, and then we'll also do like professional, uh, you know, studio footage and whatnot. And uh, uh, it, if you do a really good viral video, then it's obviously going to crush stock footage, but that costs, you know, 100 times more money, basically. So. Yeah. If you have the budget, though, it's good. Video is expensive. Professional video is expensive. What do you say, Patrick? Um, I'm not sure if you will talk about like what elements is split test uh, oh, yeah. um, off a of video. But that's something no affiliate wants to hear, but it's literally something you have to, to test. So um, the types of video that we test in Ecom, for example, are testimonial-based videos and product-based videos. So what Tim said, like having the, like, the ego perspective of someone like, unboxing the video, um, doing different things with, with the product. That's what, what works really well. Something that's also pretty cool, uh, working with slideshows. So either using the Creative Hub inside Facebook, so you can create slideshows with um, like different text elements, uh, or tools like Slidely. That's, that's also great. But the thing is, it's, that, that's really something you have to test. It's, it's better to have a high-quality short video than a shitty long, long video in yeah. my opinion. 
and and it really depends on the product. If you're, especially if you're working with like larger corporations, uh, and and you you're promoting something where there's real brand value behind that, it's often very hard to um, work with simple videos that are like non-branded and and non-promotional. But again, totally depends. So yeah, uh, their internal team won't allow anything. Exactly. You know, they won't allow you to just riff on on your iPhone. Yeah, I think kind of the trashier the better a lot of the time. I think that if we have to take a look at the, the placement and experience of the, the viewer, so they're, they're in Facebook, it's social, so let's say like they're hanging out with their friends, they don't want to be sold, and I think people have developed a very strong anti-sold defense. Yeah. So I think that if we can sneak in there where it looks like native com content, while they're in their happy place, we get them to step two in the funnel, and then move them down the road. Whereas if we say, hey, I'm gonna sell you something now, people just automatically are like, you know, stock footage, too glossy, too nice, I'm out. Yeah. Where if you put something in that's a little bit more uh, low key and a little bit more low grade, you kind of move them where you wanna go without triggering that defense. And maybe even unrelated to the product, just something that gets them to engage with it even. Like I know like Slidely or Promo, yeah, just, where you just use stock imagery and, and, and overlay it with something can I be mean, enough sometimes. A great example is we did a campaign for a company called Kingston Technology, and it's, it's a piece of hardware, so it's a SSD card that we had to sell. And the videos that they gave us was like really professional video that was recorded in the studio, and that thing just didn't sell at all. And then we flipped through their footage, and they had... There is a guy called uh, Father Robert. He has a YouTube channel. He's reviewing different products, and he's literally a priest, and he was reviewing that product. So it was a high-quality video, but it was unusual, and that thing just outperformed the other one by, like, 10, 15 times. Interesting. Now, I'm going to backtrack a little bit here, because I realized I know these guys really well, but we didn't quite do an intro. Who, who, I, I'm just curious here. Who here is in Tim's ad buyers group? Anyone on Facebook out there? It's one of the highest value groups out there for Facebook advertising. Uh, so I suggest you, you join it if you haven't. But let's just go around and back up one step and tell us who you are and what you do and why. Maybe why you're a Facebook expert rather than just three random guys up here. Yeah, so um, I am the owner of Purple Leads. Um, we have kind of three different areas that we're involved in. Uh, we are a white hat uh, lead generation network, very big with solar and different financial offers. We have an internal team that buys on um, natives, Google, Facebook. We spend usually about a million a month, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on uh, how the conversion gods are rolling with us. And then also we are now starting uh, e-commerce. And um, so we, we have a team that uh, day in, day out is uh, grinding away and uh, trying to crack campaigns. Nice. So um, I'm the co-founder of a company called AtBaker. Uh, I've two amazing partners, uh, Simon Mader and, and Michael uh, Brenner. Uh, we're essentially a whitehead, whitehead Facebook performance marketing agency. We started out as affiliates uh, in, the, in the States. And we're all based in Germany. We saw the incredible potential of you know, just helping great companies. And that's really our mission statement. Like We really want to give companies that have great products the exposure we, they, they literally deserve. And what we started doing is like focusing on one thing only, which is Facebook. We've been doing that since four years. We're doing a lot of CPA campaigns, but now, especially in the last 12 months, we started working with bigger corporations, um, helping them to introduce performance marketing into, into their companies. Cool. Uh, my name is Tim Bird, and uh, I, started the, uh, I started doing Facebook advertising about six years ago. Uh, there was only right-hand side ads at the time, actually, no newsfeed or anything like that. Uh, and, uh, and there wasn't a good community of Facebook advertisers, and Facebook changes so fast. Uh, that I wanted to talk to other people about it. So I started a group on Facebook called Facebook Ad Buyers. Uh, and now, fast forward six years later, I have a Facebook ad agency called Agency Y, uh, the Facebook Ad Buyers group. Many of you, I'm sure, have been to ad buyer meetup parties. Uh, we throw parties all the time as well at all the conventions. Uh, and, uh, and then I'm uh, just about to launch uh, uh, Ad Leaks also, which is going to be like a, like a white hat community for, uh, for AdWords, Facebook, et cetera, advertisers. Nice. So AdLeaks right now is a blog, but you're launching it as a, as a, a forum or community. Yeah, communities are where everything's going these days. Yeah? Absol absolutely, yes. I guess we're going to be doing a panel on that one tomorrow, mm -hmm. so we can, we can talk a little bit more. Okay, so now you know the guys. We can, now, now you know that they're legit. Uh, so that's really cool. So let's go back into a logistical question about video ads. What is the sweet spot? You know, you're going to say test. You're going to say test everything. But there's a right answer here. What is the, what is the sweet spot for length of video in Facebook advertising? 
Uh, I'd say it's, it's somewhat of an equation with uh, complexity of product with price point uh, and uh, age of user. It's like a combination of those. Th the younger the user, the shorter the video can be. Fucking millennials. Uh, then uh, uh, if, if it's more expensive, it needs to be longer because um, you need to sell them a little more, explain more of the benefits, kind of get them a little more emotional about it typically, depending on what your funnel looks like, obviously. Uh, and then, uh, so my opinion though, I'd say anywhere from like 30 seconds at the least. Um, I don't like doing those 15 second ones, but 30 seconds to like three minutes. Okay. Um, for us, since we do a lot of e-com, uh, it's on average 12 seconds, usually between six to 30. On mobile, less than 30. On audience network, more than 30 seconds because people on audience network are used to like longer form uh, content. And when it comes to audience building, what, uh, what James said, that you, you're really going broad with the video, don't even specify the interest targeting if you're operating in the mass market. Uh, we use video set at least two to three minutes to like really weed out the, the audience that's really interested uh, in the niche and in the product. So typically we try to keep things short, but when it comes to audience building or if we really try to push something hard into the, into the audience network, we use longer uh, videos. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit outside the box on this one. Um, mine tend to be very long because I keep a bouncing call to action at the end for a long time. So basically, I have enough content in the video to pitch. And as Tim said, more complex, it's longer. Um, and then I analyze inside of the ad reporting when the fall off point is. So let's say I've got a 30 second video, but everyone's falling off at 12 seconds. Then I'll try to edit it down and alleviate that fallout to get like a higher percentage watched. But at the end of almost all my videos, it stays static as far as the image, but then I'll have some type of bouncing call to action for another 30 seconds. Because people get distracted, they're scrolling, they stop, they watch the video, they look back. I want it to still be playing as opposed to stopping and then their experience ends. So mine, I, I, they're long, you know, a minute. It depends on how much content's before it. Maybe it's 30 seconds of bouncing arrow or, you know, 10 seconds. And it does totally depend on where that user is in the funnel and what you're trying to do. Like, I, I, this is a tactic that I think everyone who advertises on Facebook should know about if they don't, but it's that idea, yeah, of basically having people watch video and then building audiences off of who's engaged by it and then going back into it and then refilling, you know, reusing that pixel to, to, to every, every time they, they engage your product in a different way, you, you, you become more sure that they want your product. Yeah, that's why I like longer videos also because, uh, uh, you know, sometimes with a 15 second video, someone can accidentally watch half of it and then it, very, it kind of uh, waters down your video lookalikes or video retargeting of 50% or higher. Uh, so that's why one reason I also like longer ones and then, and then if you're going to do like a retargeting with uh, customer reviews and things like that, you know, it's going to be a little bit longer also. So, um, but yeah, it gives you a, like a better lookalike audience if you, the, on the higher percentage video watch. And then what is it sort of, do you build campaigns off of anything as low as 50% or 25%? Or are you really focusing on people who watch 75 or 95% of videos? Literally every single one. Every single one. Yeah, 3, 10, 25, 50, 75, 95. Wow. Nice, same thing? For us, it's 75% uh, plus, and there we actually do the retargeting to the offer uh, or to the opt-in form, and between 50 to 75, we know that audience segment is still relevant, and there we do a lot of retargeting to content, then we retarget them again into, um, into the funnel, and below we tend to skip it, but I mean, there are, there are different approaches. Nice. Yeah, I run all of them. All uh, of them. You really have no idea. You know, you just throw shit against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. It's shocking. Sometimes the people that barely watch it super convert, and the ones that watch a ton of it don't. Maybe they were just interested in the concept, but they're not really buyers. Where other people just watched a little bit, and they already decided, hey, I want to buy. So I just run all of them and split test them. Very cool. Split test. What a sexy answer. I love it. All day, every day, split all test. All day, every test day. Everything. So uh, you, you mentioned this a little bit, James, and I think it's something everyone should know about as well. It's like, it's not just video that you run. It's like supercharged video with overlays, with graphical overlays, with animated things that get people to play the video and things. What, what are some of your best tactics when it comes to these enhanced videos or graphical overlays on videos? Yeah, so I think step one that's like super overlooked is the thumbnail. You know, what do they see that's originally going to stop them from scrolling? So not everything is on autoplay. So first you need to get them actually to stop scrolling and press on the play. So I think split testing the thumbnail uh, is step one key to catch the eye, uh, to get them to press play, step one. 
Step two is, once they press play, it's important, at least in my opinion, to have some type of uh, pop and movement, whether it's left to right, top to bottom, bottom to top, that really like catches the eye Star and frames fade. it. Yes, something <laughs> needs to pop at the beginning as opposed to just starting. It needs to tell them subconsciously, okay, this just began. And then they tie in and watch. You got like two seconds maybe to grab them, and then the better you grab them at the beginning, the longer they're gonna hold. So something at the front that really blows up. Like my favorite hack is to actually occupy as much space in the newsfeed as possible. And how we do this, we do this with, ca with Canvas ads. So we have a video that's 1,080 pixels wide and almost 2,000 pixels high. So you actually need one and a half scrolls, even on a iPhone 7 or 8 Plus, to actually just go through the video. And how we break it down is that on the top we have a video playing, so in the like first section, then we have in the middle a call to action, which is usually yellow or orange, and at the bottom we have a static image, which usually displays the product or the solution. And the cool thing about that is that no matter where the user clicks on, because they have to click somewhere, no matter whether where they click on, on the video, because it's so large, they get forwarded to the canvas. And why we're doing it with Canvas, because if you use a different, uh, a different ad format, then the video goes full screen. Yep. And this is, I mean, when, this is literally the best thing you can do to increase like, the click-through rate of an ad. I'm, I'm not seeing these ads very often, but you can do really cool shit with it. Like, for example, having a doctor talking about the, the product, adding some authority to, um, to the sales pitch that will come later down the road, and then you have the product underneath. Yeah. So you're compliant with Facebook because you have to either mention it in the ad text that you're selling something or show the product, and then you can like do the hard sale, or or not not really selling hard, but just focusing on the solution in the ad text and in the uh, in the headline or the social proof, just adding exactly. social proof right under exactly. there as well, and all exactly. one ad experience. So it's like it's really great, and especially because users they get forwarded to a canvas then, which is also not something that's often like super often they're like, oh, what is that? So it's kind of disruptive, and this is what you want to accomplish. So with, with that type of combination, a really large video and a canvas ad, you're, there's the, the bullshit filter doesn't like, you know, take off yeah. compared to like other ad formats or, or tactics. So this is like by far my favorite attack. Gotcha. Yeah, for those of you that haven't tried that, that's a great tip that you can literally immediately make more money from by just using uh, Canvas and throwing your video in there instead of just a typical video because when you click it, it just full screens it, like you said, it's a great tip. Um, I, what I, I've tried a number of things. Uh, one, like, uh, like James said, you do have really only like three to five seconds or so to catch somebody's attention before they're going to keep scrolling. Uh, so you gotta, I like doing like very fast cuts of whatever it may be uh, in the beginning, like one second or less, uh, very fast cuts for the first few seconds to really like grab their attention. Uh, something that I've also tried uh, with some success, depending on the product, is throwing like a, a really stupid like viral video right in the beginning of your video so that it's not really salesy. Uh, and then, uh, and they just get it's either cat or something stupid, you know, but uh, whatever, just uh, something attention grabbing and then kind of go into, uh, uh, you, you know, your video from there. Um, uh, and then also uh, vertical videos work really well as well. Uh, you know, like around 1,000 uh, by 1,600, give or take. Uh, uh, those typically work better than your uh, your traditional like widescreen. And that's just, it's a real estate thing as well, right? It's just, it takes, like you said. It say, takes up the whole screen. Like, how many thumb movements to get past those? That's a, a technical term, I think. Do you guys find yourself watching? I do this now, too, just like, I, I watch way more ads now. Like, I, like, my data is kind of all skewed, I think, because when I see a video ad, I'm always watching it to see, you know, what, what they're doing, whether I can grab it. Do you find yourself doing that as well? Oh, absolutely, I do. I, a lot of uh, people uh, in the industry actually have ad blockers turned on, which doesn't make sense to me. Um, I like seeing ads. I like knowing what people are doing, whether it's on TV or radio or especially Facebook. But yeah, I mean, I watch what everybody's doing. I look at their landing pages, their ad copies. Uh, and now the Facebook's coming out soon where you can see everybody's ads on every single page. Uh, you know, you'll be able to do a lot of competitive research. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. We also have like a group uh, for a company set up where we just share interesting ads that we find, even they're even if they're not related to the products that we're selling. Uh, for example, I just found one ad from from Gary Vaynerchuk, which was really cool. He had a progression bar, which was like the video was really long, and that's one of the things that we really want to test now is if we have a longer video and to keep someone's attention, to like, you know, to actually capitalize on the commitment the user makes when he starts a video. 
Yeah. And that's, that's things to discover. So even if they're not product related or not related to the offer that you're promoting, I would just always like keep them some more. Because even if you're building ads like later down the road, like you still remember, oh, I saw something like half a year ago, and then you can just you know search it in, in the group and uh, yeah, get inspired. Nice. Yeah, I have to watch them. I have zero creativity <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's not true. Like I'm a data guy, so I basically have to spy and rip. So I watch every video, I rip the elements of it that I like. Not necessarily full rip, but there's different parts that work and you see if they work and you take it and you integrate it into your uh, creative vision if you don't have a creative vision. So I have to watch them. Okay, all right, good to know he's gonna be ripping, ripping all our ads here. Swipe uh, and deploy. Did you, see, uh, did you guys see that? Because I, ta I talked about that Lorenzo video we did. And we, the, he, we, there was an yeah, awesome, ripped it. Yeah, someone ripped it. It was yeah. an awesome drama. And then he, then he hijacked the thread and went on there and had 200 people commenting that if you don't give us all drones, we're going to sue you <laughs> or something. It was, yeah, it was good. So uh, what sort of investments in your teams have you made into video? Like, are you guys, are you using simple tools like Slidely or Promo where you can, where your media buyers can do this yourself? Or have you hired specific video editors for, for your video? Uh, I just, we just did a merger with DFO who has uh, 150 employees and they, uh, I don't know if any of you guys know them or not, but, yeah. uh, but they have a full video team, which is really nice because we, we had one guy in-house that was doing it and the media buyers would also kind of do it because, uh, you know, the video guy would do it and the media buyers would say, hey, no, change this. I want this to be red or I want a border or, you know, I want this to be faster or whatever. So it ended up be quicker to just get like simple uh, video editing tools uh, like Animoto or something uh, for the media buyers to do it. Uh, and then obviously now, uh, now we have, uh, I think, four or five in-house video. Uh, editors, which has been really nice, actually. Yeah, same for us. We have a really good graphics guy, a video guy um, that does a lot of work. And what's cool for us is when we work with these larger corporations, they have like video teams of like 20 or 30 people. So it's really fun to work with them very closely because we can present our ideas and they kind of just take care of the videos, they record it. And then we have like 20, 30, 50 videos to choose from and we can split test them. Uh, but I think like you have, as a Facebook marketer, you have two points of leverage. One, I think that's the easier one, is becoming really good at marketing in terms of understanding how the algorithm works, knowing how to work with the data. And the second aspect is like the creative part. Understand if you're an affiliate, it's sometimes not that easy to, first of all, find the time to create new videos. Um, you have to do that ongoingly, as James said, you have to launch campaigns every fucking day, and I'm just quoting him here. It's just really true, and it takes a lot James of time. James a lot. Uh, and uh, so, again, as affiliate, it's not easy, but if I look at the, the videos that we did sometimes, they were very often super simple. I think it's more a matter of just testing different things. So we, once we promoted a supplement, it was on the table, and we just zoomed in and out like really aggressively. Didn't make any sense, was a, but it was a six or ten second short clip, and it just converted. So I think it's a matter of just recording videos and finding the necessary uh, people. Nice. Who can handle that? Uh, one cool thing, actually, I forgot to mention when you about the video hacks is uh, on a on a widescreen video. If you do, uh, if you split it into two pieces, uh, you can actually do two different videos playing simultaneously, uh, and it's very very attention grabbing. And I've seen uh, it's it's I see a lot of the, the you know the black hat guys do it, um, and it works great for white hat though too. I'll tell you that. Uh, but literally, like two completely different videos playing at the same time in the same frame. Huh? It does really well. That's interesting. Yeah, so we hired two uh, motion graphics guys in-house, and this was an absolute game changer for us as a company for uh, two reasons. Uh, one, we've been running our solar offer for like three years, okay? Nobody in America wants to see these ads anymore. <laughs> like, I have every single image and video of solar panels that has ever been created. So, like, I've got to keep it fresh because I'm burning out, especially at scale, I'm burning out images and videos every 7 to 14 days. So it's really been a necessity. Step two in, in my concept of having the motion graphics is, if you think about the nature of what we do and the Facebook auction, our price determination is based on our click-through rate. So it's like when you have high CTR images, you're literally lowering the cost of your marketing, which more than pays for your people in-house. I mean, it, it literally is the, the lever to decrease costs. So the more that you invest in this, uh, the, the more you're gonna lower costs. The other thing, uh, I guess that's three reasons actually. So the last thing is what ends up happening when you have your media buyers making images is they, they are videos, they make a video, it's a winner, and they just run that till it burns out and then they're basically screwed because the CTR has dropped and the price has gone up. Where when you have a separate department or you have a, a systemized uh, motion graphics or video editor, 
that is required to make a certain number of new videos every week, it forces you into always testing and you just find these sweet videos that have super high CTRs because you're doing it on a system. Media buyers that are good are not video editors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they just by nature they're not, they're data people. So it's much better to make the investment in specializing in this area. Uh, I, I really, it's been a game changer for our company since we've made this addition. Who out here is running video ads right now? Good, a good amount for sure. Uh, how many have an internal media, have an internal like video person who's invested in that? Yeah, another good amount. I think, I think it just, it makes a ton of sense. Like it, it's just gonna lower your costs drastically. Very cool. So this is a personal question here because I'm working on a client right now that's trying to get, uh, we're trying to get them to watch long form video, like 15 minute videos. And the, right now they're really pushing to have all the advertising and all the audience building happening on Facebook, which is what I'm suggesting. But then they want us to send them to YouTube to watch because that's where people will actually sort of digest and watch. And I'm like, but then you lose all that data. You're not going to be able to build the audience. But do people watch long form videos on Facebook? Absolutely. Uh, you, a lot of times people do like VSLs and whatnot off of Facebook. Um, uh, you can actually, as long as it's compliant, obviously, you can actually just use that a lot of times as your ad. Use that copy uh, as the copy and then send them right to your lander. You can bypass all of that uh, drop off that you would normally get in your funnel. Um, so yeah, people, I've seen videos as long as 20, 30 minutes. Um, there's obviously more distractions on Facebook. Um, you know, they can get distracted by another video or a message or whatever, but, uh, but you, you do get a lot more audience building tools. And yeah, I would, you should tell the client, nah, don't send them to YouTube. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. Gonna. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, um, especially when we do Legion for like more complex products that, that require a lot of, uh, where we need to cover different things. Some videos are like seven, eight minutes long. They watch them. Um, and I think for, for that type of stuff that, that, that you're planning to do, if you can like start with an open loop, similar to like soap operas, like a typical soap opera sequence, I think that will also in increase the play rate and, and the- An open uh, loop? Yeah, you know, like when you watch a, uh, usually have that at, at, the, at the end of series, uh, like or an episode of a series. Yeah. Like something will happen the next one, you're just curious. Like and you have to watch the next one. Like a cliffhanger. A really. cliffhanger, yeah. Exactly. So if you would maybe incorporate that at the beginning, Guess that should She's help. also my mother. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't, that's weird. Don't do that. Yeah, it's like, uh, click to see what happens next. Click to see what happens next. That's right. Hardy Boys cliffhanger. Um, I think that the long video thing can be very, very powerful. I just think it's important to understand that in the funnel, you probably want to remove step two. Like if you're really running video to pre-sell page to offer page, if you're if you're giving the sales presentation in the video, then just pop right to the offer. Yeah. You know, like really pay yeah. attention to the messaging um, because that video, especially at 15 minutes long, it's going to get rid of all the pikers that aren't really going to buy earlier in the game. Yeah. And the ones that are left, if you watch a video for 15 minutes, you're ready to buy. So it's, I, I think it's important to see how it interacts with the full funnel. Yeah, that is the pre-sale, right? Yeah. yeah. So this is back to our sexy split testing question. Uh, and you guys alluded to this earlier, but you know, split testing is obviously the mo one of the most essential you know, skills you need to have and the, the most essential disciplines you need to have as a media buyer. What are the most important elements to test when you're split testing? Uh, I'd say that uh, definitely thumbnail is one of them. As James said, uh, um, and I posted that a uh, little tip uh, before too, and I've seen a cost go 50, like half cost just changing the thumbnail, and the video is exactly the same. Huh. Um, uh, so that's a big one, uh, and then uh, the first, five or 10 seconds of the video is absolutely crucial. Uh, and then try different styles, like uh, professional, amateur, try 15 seconds, try two minutes, uh, try, and then try types of videos, like uh, testimonials versus like very salesy versus more like informational. Um, so try like different styles of video as well. Yeah. yeah I think uh, Tim said everything there is to split test. I think a really useful uh, feature uh, that you can use is uh, called dynamic creatives. So. If, if the angle doesn't change too much, and if there's not a, too big of a mismatch between the video and the ad text and, and, and uh, the different elements, uh, the cool thing is that Facebook creates automatically different ver variations. Um, so you're not facing like 10 different page post IDs, but there's just one. And the good thing is, especially if you run more aggressive stuff, the more ads you submit, so the more page post IDs you create, the higher there's a chance that your ad goes through manual review. Um, of course, the negative feedback also, it starts to pile up on the page post ID level, so you have to be careful, especially as you scale. Uh, the ratio of negative to positive feedback can be out of balance. 
Um, but it's, it's I mean, we, I absolutely love that, like creative, um, creative, dynamic creatives, especially if you want to test things like subtitle or no subtitle or different subtitles. So, yeah, do that with dynamic creatives. Yeah, creative subtitles scene. are pretty essential, right? Yeah. Like generally, that's one thing we, like, that's because yeah. you have to tap to, to put the sound on, so you need right. to have those subtitles. Yeah. And you don't want to use, you do not want to use Facebook's auto subtitle generator, uh, correct? Terrible, no. It's brutal. Uh, yeah. yeah you, uh, with subtitles also, uh, yeah, even if you don't have anybody talking in the video, subtitles can actually be very good to just kind of uh, to either you know, be a little salesy if you want or to just kind of guide people through the video, even if there's no one talking in them. So even if you don't have someone talking, still try subtitles anyway. Okay. Yeah, I just think on the split testing level, um, I think it's important not to get hung up on the minutia, especially in the beginning, meaning like changing the colors, et cetera. It will increase conversion rate, but that's not where you should start out testing. Start out testing very coarse, thumbnails for sure. This is the most important thing I would split test first. But then as far as the video is done, make very, very different versions. Find the winning version and then start fine tuning it with the smaller things. Nice. Now, were there any other hacks or tips that we weren't able to cover before that you, that you have? Anyone out there? Or did we, already, did we cover most of the best ones? I know Patrick has a talk tomorrow, so he can't give away all of them. And then he's also going to be at a Facebook Mastery Live. Nope. Those are the most yeah, of the tips. Listen, I'll throw someone out there. It's really a hack. Uh, you, you can put thumbnails in that aren't connected to the video. Ooh. So you could put in like a crazy clickbaity thumbnail that's not even in the video. Like some weird toenail thing or yeah, something exactly. like, what is that skin follicle? You get it, yeah. like the, the type of stuff you see on natives or whatever that just you're like, what the hell is this? The yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it'll really get them, it'll trick them into the click and then hopefully your video converts them and uh, this is, it can be a real game changer. Why don't native ads have video? They're starting to. Are they starting to, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, the outbrain people, it's a, uh, again, it's like, um, I think that it's the format that it's in. Like when you're in the native environment, which is usually like a news publication or whatever, you're not in a video watching mood where when you're in Facebook, this is your experience now. So I don't think it has quite the uh, right mindset of user on natives that it does on Facebook. Yeah. Nice. Um, so I'm just curious if people wanted to like hear more from you on these topics over the next, say, two days or three days, what are some of the ways that they could potentially get more of these amazing tips from you guys? I'm leading you here. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, well, two ways, Eric. Yeah. So uh, the day after this, um, I'll be speaking at Facebook Mastery Live, which is already uh, sold, out, sold out, but we will be live streaming. Um, Recording is also available. After that, we're doing a uh, elite retreat, basically a mastermind, uh, there's going to be multiple speakers besides myself. Guy's pretty much a lot smarter than me, so I'm pretty excited about learning. Way more creative. Way more creative. <laughs> uh, better dressed, everything. But no, basically, uh, there's going to be guys that myself and, and, and these different people are going to sit down and help basically analyze people's businesses, analyze campaigns, and just answer all the questions that they have um, to really just give them whatever they want. As opposed to just kind of a teaching model, it's going to be a chance just for everyone to ask so that we're able to help. It is, as you know, it's sold out. It um, we have one villa. We do have one villa spot left, and then day pass is available. Yeah, so I was going to say, if, if you guys want to come, and I would implore you to do so, I mean, everything we do is learning-based. It's pretty much the biggest investment we can make because we have brain jobs. Um, I, I would try to get with Eric and see if you can still get in to get a uh, day pass. I think it's one of the most valuable investments that you can make is adding to your knowledge base. Um, you know, if, if we think about like college, a lot of people go to school in the United States, spend 45, 50, $60,000 that they can't pay back for years and years and years, where spending a couple K on a uh, learning event that you can get your ROI back in the following week is huge. I went to Tim Bird's mastermind. I go to, you know, every, every mastermind that's available, I go to. So I'm a big learning dude, so plus it's tax sorry to be long-winded. Plus it's tax deductible. What's that? It's, plus it's tax deductible. Absolutely. Amazing. So all three of these guys are going to be live streamed from Facebook Mastery Live. 
we're going to be doing our mastermind, and t you're also doing a mastermind in Phuket. Uh, yes. Actually, no, my mastermind is uh, in Bangkok in okay. a couple of days, uh, timbirdmastermind.com, if anyone's interested. Uh, and, uh, and then I have the, just the retreat in Phuket, actually, just a couple days after you guys. Nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's just for fun and uh, hanging out and networking. And I can't really impress upon you guys enough that networking is really what these events are about. Obviously, information as well. Uh, but networking is really what can change the game for you immediately. Who you know uh, is, is, you know, uh, what's that term? Uh, uh, your network is your net worth, right? Yeah. Uh, and it really holds true. Uh, network as much as you can at these events. And when you go to these smaller kind of retreats and, uh, and masterminds and whatnot, you really get to know people on a much deeper level and spend more time with them. So I really recommend you guys do that. Fantastic. I think there's been a ton of value in this presentation. I hope you guys agree. Let's give our panel a really warm well, uh, round of applause here. Thanks, guys. Thank you.